and I'm just gonna keep getting weirder as the night goes on. <laughs> oh gosh, there's so many weird moments in this book. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, The Awkward Book Nerd. It is me, Alana. For this video, I wanted to do the mid-year freakout tag for you guys. Last year, I did it kind of late, so I decided that this year I was going to try and do it, like, not early, but just on time, I guess. I don't know. So I figured it was a good time to film it. I'm excited to tell you guys my favorite things so far of the year, and not so favorite things of the year so far. I'm just going to dive right into the questions, and hopefully you guys enjoy my answers. Okay, so the first question is the best book you've read so far in 2019. So for that one, I actually chose Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schultz. I'm actually really surprised about this. Um, I think last year I may have chosen a contemporary as my favorite. I'm kind of shocked that this is my favorite of the year so far because it is a fantasy, but I think out of all the books that I've read, this is one of the ones that probably has one of the best world building in my opinion. Like I was reading this book and I loved, loved, loved the queens. They are probably my favorite part of this book as a whole. But also like as I was reading more about this world and this like kingdom, I like wanted to know more. And so I was so sad to find out that this was a standalone. And part of me really hopes that the author maybe like does a sequel, but maybe like delves more into just this world in general someday. It would be really interesting to see like what she would do with it because I feel like she just did such a good job and it's so that the story, it's like kind of left open-ended, kind of not, I don't know, no spoilers, but um, the way the world is, it's left so open-ended that, like, I would love to see, like, the other parts of the world because you only see maybe two parts of the kingdom, um, and then, they, like, there's maybe, like, two or three more parts you don't see, so I would love to see, like, those and what it's like to live in those places, if that makes sense. But yeah, this was, like, honestly my favorite fantasy so far this year. Excluding the Harry Potter series, I feel like that is, like, in a whole other category so far since I've worked my way through that. The next question is best sequel you've read so far in 2019? For that one I had to choose Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I feel like this is probably the only sequel I've read not counting rereads and so I felt like this was also fitting because I really did enjoy like I've been enjoying the book so far. I'm on the third book currently as I'm filming this and I'm loving it. So the next question is new release you haven't read yet but want to. So I have two for this question because they're kind of like both equally equally ones I really want to get my hands on at some point. The first one is This Time Will Be Different by Misa Sugiara. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. This one, one, the cover is beautiful. Two, the story really caught my interest because it deals with a girl who works at a flower shop, which sucked me in just because I have a thing for people who work in like shops like flower shops or bakeries and I have, I have a thing for stories like that but also it deals with the topic of like the historical events where during World War II America imprisoned um, the Japanese into internment or work camps internment camps and so this book deals with that as well I don't want to go into too many details because I can't remember the full synopsis and I don't want to say anything wrong because I feel like it is such a delicate topic but as soon as I like read this office, I was like, I really want to read this. It sounds so interesting, and the cover is just so beautiful, and flowers. So I'm excited to eventually be able to read this. The second book I have is Somewhere Only We Know by Maureen Gu. I have one other book by Maureen Gu that was gifted for Christmas, I think by Michelle. I think it's uh, The Way You Make Me Feel. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about the title. I can't remember for sure. If Yeah. But this one really caught my interest because it's about a K-pop star who meets, like, this boy, I can't remember if he's like a photographer or something like that, and like they have like one night together or something, and it just sounds super cute. It sounds like a K drama, and I like love K dramas, so I was like, I really want to get my hands on this and read it and see how I feel about it. So eventually, hopefully, I will get both of these and I can read them and tell you what I think. Editing Alana here. Um, I had meant to mention this book too as one of the books that I'm most anticipating, but I literally blinked when I was filming. But that is The Magnolia Sword, A Ballad of Mulan by Sherry Thomas. This is literally a Mulan retelling with added extra, like, things. 
in the story and oh my gosh i'm so excited for it to come out i want to get my hands on it and just devour it because like i already can tell it's probably gonna be a really good story so just wanted to add that in there well i am talking about it the next question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So I also have two for these ones. I'm sorry I have multiple answers, but like these are hard questions, especially for this year. There are a lot of good books coming out. I feel like I'm going to say that every year I do this talk, but I'm just saying. The first one is The Beautiful by Renee Audier. I'm excited for this because your girl loves vampires. Like Twilight is my thing. I will never not love vampires. Like I have a whole shelf, like, well, I had a whole shelf back at my old house dedicated to vampires and I guarantee you that when I get my new shelves it's gonna it's gonna come back my vampire shelf is just gonna be a thing and I'll show you guys and it'll be beautiful I loved Vampire Academy, Morganville Vampires, uh, Vampire Kisses so there's a, there's a bunch of vampire series that like I still love and own and so I'm so excited to, that this is coming back that they're coming back in this book and so I've never read a Renee Audie book so I figured this would probably be a good try to see how I feel about her writing and her world building and so yeah I'm excited all that to say. And the next book I have is Midnight Beauties by Megan Shepard. So I read Grim Lovelies and I think this is the last book in the duology. I think so. Do not quote me on that just in case. But I'm pretty sure this is the last book. At least that's what I've heard. I am excited to see how Megan Shepard ends this duology. The first book ended on a like interesting mysterious note so I'm excited to see what else happens and how the like conflict kind of gets resolved in the end and I just love like the gothic Parisian feel the book gives me and I'm just excited to dive back into that world. Biggest disappointment for that one I chose A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. I'm so sorry. I okay I got this as a gift from I think it's yeah, from Emmy, from Emmy Rose Reads. I got this as a gift from her, I think, for Christmas? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, for Christmas. And I really wanted to like this. I've heard so many good things about it. I think Sherlock Holmes is, like, such an interesting story. I've never, per like, read the books myself, but, like, the concept and, like, the TV shows always interested me. So I was like, maybe I'll like the, this, like, retelling. Maybe I'll enjoy it, especially because it's, like, reverse roles. Or not reverse roles, but at least, like, the Sherlock character is a woman who's, like, very smart and all this kind of stuff. And I read it, or I started it, and DNF'd it. I started it, and I was just, like, bored. I just, I couldn't care. I, I was half, maybe halfway through. I think this, yeah, this is where I was, like, halfway through. And I just reached a point where I was like, why do I care about these characters? Like, why do you, does this author want me to care about them? I just don't want to. And I just, I feel so bad because I really wanted to love the book. And it was just, like, so disappointing because I thought it would be so much better. And so much interesting from so all the hype everybody was giving it. But it just wasn't. And of course, this is just my opinion, so, like, take it with a grain of salt. If you think you'll be interested, I say at least try it out. That's what I did, but, yeah. The next question is the biggest surprise, and that is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. So, I took it upon myself this year to read the Grishaverse trilogy so I could start the Six of Crows duology. So, I made it through the first two books. I haven't gotten the last book yet just because I've uh, kind of been on a book buying ban not by choice but by necessity at the moment because I went through a big move and now I'm in the middle of job hunting so the funds are kind of low and so my funds don't really need to be going towards books is what my head is telling me though my heart is breaking inside constantly because of all the new books that are coming out that I want to buy. So granted I'm gonna try and borrow the last book from my library within the next month and hopefully I can get it on my phone as an ebook and I can just read through it and finish this but I would eventually like to get my own copy so I can just have the entire trilogy because otherwise it's gonna bother me because I'm just that type of person but this was a surprise because um, I know everybody loves the Six of Crows duology and so when I decided to go back and read through these first everybody told me to like lower my expectations and so I kind of did also again because it's a fantasy and I don't like, it seems like I read a lot of fantasy, but I just reread the same series over and over again. Like, that's just what I do. And so whenever I, I find a new series or a new fantasy book that I like, it's always a surprise to me because I'm like, I never know what's going to happen or how I'm going to feel about it. So 
the fact that I like read this and then I was like, wow, this was actually good and like I was excited that it's gonna get better in Six of Crows surprised me but also made me happy because it made me realize that I'm like, I wanna read more. Granted, the second book was uh, not my absolute favorite. Um, I was thoroughly annoyed a lot of the time, but I will say that I still love Lee Bardugo's world building and I love her characters. So I feel like this has just been a great new discovery to me. I also just love I love this world, like the fact that it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of like a Russian world and yet it has its own distinct features and like magical abilities and the fact that like the like powers and the people are so unique that like you're like yes this is a Lee Bardugo story. I think that's like what I love the most is that like I've never read a story like this and so it's intriguing. Next question is favorite new author, debut or new to you? For this one, it was hard because I feel like I've read a lot of new authors for me this year, which is good because I'm branching out, but also not so good because it's hard to choose a favorite. And I can't just go back to like my old favorites like Sarah Nelson. But for this one, I chose Lee Bardugo because I feel like so far out of all the authors that I have read, her books are the ones I read the most of, and so I've gotten to explore her writing the most out of all of these new authors I've gotten to read from. Not that like you can't... Like, not that debut authors can't be my favorite too, but I just feel like I've gotten to really, like, like dive into her world, and I like that a lot, so I feel like for right now she is probably my favorite new author. Next question is newest fictional crush, and that one I chose Cooper from We Were Beautiful by Heather Hepler. I think, again, I mentioned this in my May wrap-up, May April wrap-up, this story was so beautiful, and I think Cooper was just such a beautiful character to have in the story. The fact that he was just so confident in himself, despite the fact how people would react to his facial deformity, and despite the fact that he didn't have the best like home life, I just think that he added an extra amazing element to the story that I love so much. And yeah, that's just all I can say without like vomiting on my love. <laughs> The next question is newest to favorite character. So for that one I chose Catherine from Three Dark Crowns. I had to think about this so hard because I, I struggle with choosing favorite characters. Like I can choose a favorite character with a, within a book, but like between all of my books, it's so hard for me because I'm like, I love them all. They each have a distinct feature, which makes me love them. They're like my children. Like I can't really choose. Like I know there are some parents who do choose favorites, but like I seriously can't. Like, there's some days where some characters are, like, higher above the others, but, like, they're not necessarily like, favorites. They're just, like, it, it's a roller coaster of emotions most of the time. But for this one, for this year, I chose Catherine because I feel like she was just kind of, like, the underdog in, in a sense in this story. Sorry if the angle is weird or if my positioning is different from before. My camera died. And I'm mad because I literally was talking to my camera for a solid, like, l a long time and... I had some good stuff that I said that was really funny, and now I can't say it again because I can't remember anything I said. Anyways, back to Catherine. So, she intrigued me the most. Um, every time I got to, like, a different part that didn't include her, I was like, I want to go back to Catherine. I want to know what's going on. What is Catherine doing? Like, I was kind of like her stalker. Like, I was, like, going through the book and I was like, where's Catherine? Why isn't she here? What is she doing? Does she miss me? I miss her. Like, <laughs> that's essentially what I was doing. It's just, like, it was just bad. And... You probably now know who I want to win, which is fine, but we shall see how the rest of the series goes. Alright, the next question is, book that made you cry? So for that one I have two choices because I suck at deciding on things and I'm an indecisive woman. The first the book I have is Now Is Everything by Amy Giles. I chose this because this book made me feel so many emotions, a lot of it sadness because of the fact that, uh, the things that this main character went through were insane and I like no one should ever have to go through those. I like anytime she experienced something hard I just wanted to go in and like hug her and protect her and then fight everybody that was trying to like make her feel bad or not important or anything like that and it was it was just bad. Like I I just felt for her and I like it was just a whole thing and she was like so strong throughout the story that it just made me cry like more because I was like you're such you're such a strong woman and you've been through all this crap and you're still so strong why I mean I know why and I'm so happy but like I would literally crumble on the floor if all of this was happening to me at this moment. The second book I chose was Sadie from, uh, by Courtney Summers. 
I chose this book because we all know, we all know, if you haven't read this book and you want to, you will eventually know. I, I was swimming in a lake of misery in this book. I literally felt 24-7 sadness, pretty much, and it was such, still such a good book, but Please trigger warnings, honestly trigger warnings for the first book, if you guys, I can't list them all, but if you need to know, I will link my wrap up up above, and then also you can check out my Goodreads reviews for both of these books, and it will have all the trigger warnings listed. But this one, I just, I think it broke my heart more because of how realistic this story was. The fact that there are people out there who do, who do just slip through the cracks of the system and are unseen or ignored or just aren't acknowledged as true human beings and it blows my mind because I'm like literally every single person on this planet they're important and like granted okay people who like murderers and stuff like that probably uh, don't count but like the people who don't do anything to you that people just automatically write off as unimportant or, or unneeded is stupid and it's disgusting and I hate it so much and I I just never like I never ever want to make fun someone feel this way and the fact that there are people out there that feel this way breaks my heart like I've definitely felt unseen and ignored and like invisible in my life but never to this extent and I feel grateful for that but I also feel sad because of the fact that like there are just people out there and Unknowingly, I could have contributed to it and that breaks my heart even more and this is just this is this is my cancer talking It's cancer season. So welcome to it. But like I just like feel so many things when I think about this and This book made me feel so many things because there are girls just like Sadie all over the world who end up going through the same things she did or worse and it just breaks my heart and I'm getting teary-eyed because like just thinking about, <laughs> oh gosh, just thinking about someone uh, just going through that. And it's partially why I wanted to pursue a field of mental health because I wanted to create a safe space for young girls to feel acknowledged and seen and feel like they are heard. And granted, it's, it's taken me a minute to get there, but I eventually want to get to that point and hopefully I can help. At, at some point in my life in some way I have no idea but I just it would be great to be on that path so a book that made you happy for that one I chose Alex approximately by Jen Bennett I feel like this story was just very wholesome it was a very like cleanly done contemporary for me like not clean like PG or anything like that but just like there was no like there was sadness and happiness and like definitely like twists and turns but it wasn't like intense like with Sadie like it was just like middle level like spikes in between but mostly middle level and I appreciated that because like majority of the time I was pretty happy with the book and I think Jen Bennett could be like a potential new favorite I definitely want to read more of her works to see how I feel but I definitely could see her like being another contemporary author that I really like but I just enjoyed the story and I like enjoyed that it was just one of those things where I could like I definitely guessed the plot like through the book and I guessed all the like surprises but that was okay with me because it was just like nice to have something that was just like simple and easy to like get through and work through and process and just be like this is a nice end result kind of thing if that makes sense uh, I feel like I'm not making any sense anymore but whatever next question is mo the most beautiful book I've received or bought this year so far and I like jumbled all those words around but that's okay that one I chose the graphic novel is Speak <laughs> by Lori Halsey Anderson. I love this book. This is one of my favorite books. It's the reason why I got into mental health and started loving mental health and decided to go into psychology. Partial, it's actually partially the reason. The other part is like Criminal Minds, but that's like a whole other story that I don't really get into right now. But it's funny. But I just like love this story so much because of how important it is and because of how honest. Um, I will say be careful of trigger warnings with this one as well. I am just so happy that they made this into a graphic novel because I just think it's another way to really get the story across in a different medium. It may be like books with just words are not like the best for some people, like graphic novels are maybe their choice. This would be like this is another great outlet for them to see this and feel either seen or heard or anything like that. 
So I just, I truly, truly adore the story. And I got this from my bookish Cupid from the Valentine's Day readathon. I still don't know who you are. And if you're watching this, I'm like sending you like love and hugs through my eyes staring at this camera. And I know that sounds very creepy, but it's okay. We'll get through this. The last question I have for you is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So I'm going to say the same answer that I gave last year, and that is all of the unread books on my shelves because your girl is failing or like it's either that I'm failing to read them fast enough or I just keep adding too many books too fast to the shelf. I don't know <laughs> but for some reason for every book that I read that is unread on my shelves I add another book and it's very frustrating <laughs> and yeah like maybe this ban this like not self-imposed kind of forced on me ban of buying books is good because it's forced me to like sit down and like read more books than I'm getting, but at the same time, it hurts still. It really hurts, because your girl wants all, all the new books, all of them. But yeah, just all the books that I have on my shelves that I have not touched or read, because I'm either lazy or I just haven't gotten around to them, that is my answer. And that'll probably be my answer for the rest of my life, because I am me, and I don't really change much. Welcome to my life. Anyways. If you guys like the video, oh well, this was my mid-year book tag. If you guys want to do this tag, you are tagged to do it. I don't, do you tag people in this tag? I don't know. Anyways, moving on. If you like the video, go ahead and like it down below. If you guys have any comments or questions or just responses to any of the things I said in this video, please respond down below in the comment section. I will always respond back because I literally usually have no life and I'm just kind of sitting on my phone when it happens, so... Yeah, and if you guys are not good at commenting, go ahead and leave me an emoji down below. Um, I am still the idea for my friend Sylvia from Wish Fulfillment because I like to know you guys are here, and I know that sometimes commenting can be really hard or just like nerve wracking. And so if you just leave me a little like emoji, like a banana or some random like car emoji, I don't know, I'll probably respond back with another random emoji, like the pineapple is a pretty good one, or the monkey is a nice one too, or. My favorite one is uh, the cactus or the little guy that has like the, the little hmm face. He's my favorite too, so I could do that one as well. And yeah, this is going downhill. Um, and if you guys want to talk to me, hang out with me, I have social media links to Twitter and Goodreads. If you guys want to see more videos of me, please subscribe down below. <laughs> You guys are awesome flowers in a world full of weeds.